In our GIS classes, we start to talk about regression analysis. Regression analysis is a set of statistical processes for estimating your relationships among a variable. When we focus on the relationship between one variable, typically which we call a dependent variable, and one or more explanatory variables, which we call independent variables, or sometimes they're called predictors. We're going to look at a couple examples here. The most simple one that we're going to look at here that we've talked about in our class, and we're going to look at this in both Excel, and then I'll have another video where we cover this using our GIS software, is single linear regression. Basically, it just concerns two-dimensional sample plots with one independent variable and one uh, dependent variable. So typically, these are x and y's, and we're going to show examples of these where these might be exp expressed in different units. We try to find a linear equation, and we'll show some a couple of different types as accurately as, as possible. So we'll, we'll talk about a couple of different examples and look at some caveats right here. You can see I'm looking at Excel here, and I have two variables. I have x and y. And in essence, x tries to explain y to some level here. And we'll look at the example because we'll look at real world data. And I can look at my x and y, and I'm playing with this in Excel here, so I can highlight these. I can go to insert my plots and charts, and I'm just going to click a sp uh, scatter plot right here, and you can see the relationship. This is just an equation for a line that says y equals 2x plus 7. So you can see when x equals 0, y equals 7. With x equals 1, y equals 9. And it fo follows along this nice line here, which has a positive slope. We get a little bit more complex where we have y equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. So I've plugged these in here. Now obviously, this isn't linear, but you can see this is a parabola. And since it has a x squared has a, a negative coefficient, you can see that it's facing down or open down. But what we're going to start to look at is how we integrate this with GIS data. And I've got some information here. I've got school data right here. And I had a former student who looked at the relationship between school attendance rate and non-passing rates on EOG score. She was actually a, uh, she is actually a middle school teacher, and she wanted to see if there was a relationship between these. So we're going to use the data that she had these for Durham County, middle schools in Durham County. So this is a nice map here of our school attendance rates. This is just a graduated symbol map. Bigger the dots, schools have larger, uh, more or better school attendance rates. We go from you know 93 percent or 90, to, you know about 90 percent here, and we'll look at the actual data up to 96, 97 percent here. So these are the school attendance rates. So the bigger the dots have the better school attendance. And then another one has EOG scores of percent scoring one or two. So she wanted to focus on these non-passing rates, and she wanted to look at the scores of one and two. So essentially, the larger the dots represent the higher percentage of non-passing rates. You know, in essence, you know, students who did poor in these schools versus the smaller dots where students had higher passing rates. Of uh, higher passing rates um, and um, high, higher passing rates and more of the, the non-passing rates. So she was really trying to focus on the this non-passing percentage here. Okay. But when we actually look at the data here, we can see it right here. Okay, so we see the non-passing rate versus attendance, and I can make a scatter plot of this right here. Okay, so what I did before was I went to insert charts. Uh, I'm going to hit Control Z. Okay, but I went to my charts. I went down to scatter plots right here, and I made the map. And I, I went and charted the, changed the axis a little bit right here, so I can select the data. I can format the plot area, and all these you know all these other things here, so I can change these numbers. So I can look at this plot right here. Okay, and one of the things that I can do here, you can see the general trend here. And basically, when we look at si simple linear regression, is we try to explain one variable with another. So our explanatory variables are going to be attendance. We're going to try to see if attendance can explain the non-passing rates. Okay, so our dependent variable 
is going to be the y-axis, which is our non-passing rate. So you can see these go from about 35 up to almost 70 here. So in this axis, and we're just going to graph these. So instead of x's and y's, we're going to be graphing these as percentages. And these could be dollars, percent, average cars, or, or whatever we looked at on these axes. So these are slightly different here. Obviously, down the bottom left here, I don't have a, a true 0, 0. It's going to be somewhere down on the bottom because I, didn't wa I wanted to minimize the amount of white space in this particular graph here. And we'll see how this is different. Okay, so but the general trend is as the attendance rate increases, the non-passing rate decreases. So you can see this general trend right here. Okay, and this is what this student tried to do. Now I can add these trend lines. I'm going to do this a couple of different ways here. Okay, I'm going to click on one of these all these points, and I can right mouse click and click add trend line. Okay. So I can click on Add Trend Line, and I can click on this. I can actually see this line here. You know, this is the line of best fit. There's a number of different ways we can actually calculate this line. I've talked about some of these in classes. One of the ways is OLS, Ordinary Least Squares uh, Method, to basically determine the slope and the y-intercept for this particular line. Obviously, looking at this equation, you can see it has a negative slope. So as attendance increases, non-passing rates decrease. Now over here in Excel, and you might have to highlight this or open this up, I can set the intercept, which I don't want to do, but I can click on Display Equation on Chart and Display R Squared. Okay, So I can see these numbers over here, and this says y equals negative 2.651x plus 305. So negative 2.651 is the slope, and the y-intercept is 305. Okay, And the r squared is equal to 0.6728. So remember what we talked about with this r squared value. So in essence, about 67% of the variation in these non-passing scores can be explained via attendance. And these R squared scores go from 0 all the way up to 1. In essence, if our R squared scores were equal to 1, we could perfectly predict our non-passing rate via attendance. But we know there's other factors that are going to help predict this. And we can look at one here, which has a relatively higher, what we call residual here, this higher distance. So we talk about residuals, and I'm going to open this up in Excel a little bit and play with this in Excel when I run the regression tools. But we can see what this equation looks like. So if I know the attendance rate is 93, I can plug 93 in here to get a predicted non-passing rate if I wanted to. But we know in reality they're not going to fall nice and neatly on these lines based on these equations here. So basically, this r squared tells us how well this fits this line. Okay, and a 0.67 is pretty good. Now, I can reinforce some of these relationships by going to my regression tools analysis and looking at these a little bit further. Okay. So I'm going to click on data. And I'm going to click on data analysis. We've played with some of these data analysis tools, but I'm going to click on regression. Okay. And for now, and for the most part, we're just going to be looking at linear regression. There's multiple regression. Examples of multiple regressions are we have multiple variables to try to explain a single variable. Okay. So we have variables both x and y, where we might look at all right, attendance and something else to explain non-passing rates. Because when we look at the equation, it's just y equals mx plus b. We can also have polynomial equations here. And if we looked at that add trend line, we can actually fit it to a curve, like a polynomial, like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. I can fit it to an exponential, like y equals a times e to the bx power. Okay. This is going to be very simple linear regression where one variable explains the other. You typically want more. Uh, you want better statistical software than Excel in order to do some of this mul uh, single, uh, multiple linear regression in order to do this, or some of this more complex analysis. Okay, so but we're going to do regression here. My input, okay, is going to be my y. It's going to be my non-passing rate. My x is going to be attendance. So we're going to see how well x can explain why. I have some labels, confidence. I'm going to click on residuals because like I mentioned before and we've talked about cl in class, residuals measure how far 
we all are off this line. So you can see this point right here has very high attendance, but also high non-passing rates. But what I'm going to do is click OK. And you can see what I have right here. Okay, To me, the most important things that we have here. I've got this x variable. This tells me the slope. This tells me that this is, there is a negative relationship with this. Okay, And you notice here, when I look at this school data and I see y equals negative 2.651x plus 305.98, we can get these values right here. x variable, negative 2.651, and then my, co my y-intercept is going to be the 305.98. Now, the things that are important to me here, I've got the r squared adjusted r squared. Basically, the adjusted r squared adjusts for the number of predictors in this model. In this particular case, there's only one predictor, so we can just leave it at this r squared. The other thing that's important to me is this p-value right here and this significance value, but typically I find this point 0.003656 right here. Okay, and I've talked about this before. I have 10 points right here. And to me, this p-value is what are the chances if I threw 10 points up onto this graph, they'd appear in this pattern. Okay. And it's going to be really, really, really small. Okay, this point 0.003, it's like 99% significant or confidence, okay? basically meaning that there is some relationship we can say with 99% confidence that there is some relationship between attendance and non-passing rates. Okay, So these are really important here, this significant f, and we also find it right here under this p-value. Okay, I'll go back to this uh, really quickly here, but I have a graph here that just has no relationship between the data. Okay, I'm going to show you what uh, an example of no uh, data that, that doesn't have a relationship. And I've already put this here. You can see y equals negative 0.4x plus 13. r squared equals 0 0.02. So basically only about 2% of y can be explained, or 2% of the variation in y can be explained via x. And I also already ran my regression, so you can see the significance. It's 0.67. So this 0.67 basically says that there's about a 67% chance okay, that this is just the result of random chance. Okay. So, and like we talked about with our two-tailed t-tests, the lower the number, the more apt we are to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, our null, our null hypothesis is that these aren't related to each other. Okay, these aren't related to each other. Okay, so this is just an example here that we can see where r squared is very small. This p-value is very high. With this school data, when I run this here, my p-value is extremely small. That's what we want if we want to explain explain if there are relationships between our attendance and non-passing rates. Okay. So in conclusion, we've got a lot of interesting data with simple linear regression. This is a very simple example where we mapped this data already, and then we want to see if there was a relationship between two of these points. And sometimes these are difficult to conceptualize within the context of GIS. So if we were to bring something like this into a graph, this would further accentuate that. And then some of the metrics that, like this R squared right here, helps explain that it's a very solid relationship. We have a negative correlation right here. And then we can explain through this p-value right here that there's a very good chance that these two variables are correlated.